question. Um, basically, you admitted to the debt that was bought for 52 cents to the dollar. You admitted it was relatively high because you claimed it was short term and it was a prudent business practice. Um, in the wake of the April 16 demonstrations, the Bretton Woods system uh, institutions have actually admitted to the imperfections of such lending practices. So, I mean, I'm not trying to say that you're not a prudent businessman or what you engaged in with my country was not a prudent business practice. But I just want you to identify some of the drawbacks of what you did because, in my opinion, that would be an attack by the fashion re report to identify the weaknesses and address alternative alternative ways in which you could have um, in, been involved in the buy, buyback, scheme, <laughs> buyback scheme with the country. So I just want you to identify the drawbacks and the, because it, it's impossible for the system yeah. to be perfect. Well, so. well <clears throat> you, you have a, it's a multifaceted question. First of all, uh, I don't think it was possible to do the buyback any better than it got done. I think it was, it's by far the most successful debt buyback of commercial debt on behalf of uh, a developing country that's ever been done. No country has, has liquidated as much of its commercial bank debt as Nigeria did in this operation at anywhere near the type of price that uh, Nigeria did. It couldn't have been done any better. Uh, could it have been done in the open? No. It couldn't have been done transparently because they would have never achieved the, the price, this, the debt savings, the this cost savings. Uh, so, so what you're saying is the the approach you chose was the best approach, and it was the approach that Nigeria chose. And you know, I was fortunate enough to be one of the people who helped carry it out, and we did it in the best manner we knew how. Uh, which was to buy the debt as cheaply as possible and as quickly as possible before uh, everybody caught on to what was going on. Now, this, is, this brings up another question. Some people have said, well, was this legal? There is not a single loan agreement that you can show me that the Federal Republic of Nigeria ever did enter in, entered into prior to these debts being repurchased that even contemplated such a thing as a debt buyback. The United States at the time, through Secretary Brady, the Treasury, or the Sec Treasury Secretary Brady, and many others throughout the world were encouraging third world countries, developing countries, to find market-oriented solutions to their debt problems and trading problems. This was the perfect market-oriented solution by the Central Bank of Nigeria to liquidate a huge volume of debt for Nigeria at relatively modest cost. <coughs> So that's my answer. Who was the next person I identified? Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Minton, for a very detailed and educated question. I have a three part question. Uh, one is uh, if the debt buyback scheme has proven to be such an efficient way of uh, dealing with Nigeria's debt stock, how come we still win 30 billion? <laughs> Question two, what value does Nigeria's debt currently carry on the books of our creditors? And three, are you still working with this central bank of Nigeria? If you're not, then I'm going to be applying to them for a job tomorrow. <laughs> First, I'll answer the last one first. I'm not currently working for the Central Bank of Nigeria, but uh, uh, you know, it's maybe we can go into business. <laughs> 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 You know, I'll be honest with you, I don't know the current market price. The last time that I uh, saw the current market price, it was around 60 cents on the dollar for uh, rescheduled Central Bank of Nigeria, or Central uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria notes, which now, you know, are, are guaranteed 
as to principal by uh, U.S. Treasury bills. When this debt buyback plan worked, uh, you know, when the, the official buyback happened and that central bank paid all the banks in the world who own, own Nigeria debt 40 cents on the dollar, they had to secure that. This was part of this Brady plan scheme. They had to secure that with U.S. Treasury bonds for the principal. And then they had to also issue a rolling guarantee for the interest. In other words, 18 months of interest was guaranteed and, you know, assuming it was paid, it kept going. Now, as to whether, as to why the debt stock is still so high, the vast majority of, uh, and you know, I have been out of this uh, for some years now, so I'm not familiar with what's been going on, but the key thing is that the vast majority of Nigerian debt is government-to-government uh, -government debt. It's not commercial creditors who are so much involved in the debt. I mean, the total amount of Nigerian commercial debt uh, that was owed to banks when we did this buyback operation was $5 billion. We bought back $3 billion of that. And the remaining $2 billion was repurchased by Nigeria in the official buyback. So, Nigeria owes $21 billion to the Paris Club, I think. Yeah, 21 billion. <coughs> that is yeah. So, <clears throat> the, what's happened in the, if that's the case, that, that leaves, uh, what is it, how many minutes? We're all 31 billion, right? Yeah. And 21 is the power. Okay, so that's $10 billion worth of debt. The, 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 the 5 billion that was repurchased by Nigeria turned into 2 at 40 cents on the dollar. It was 2 billion worth of new debt. And the Central Bank of Nigeria promissory notes were outstanding, were about 3 billion, of which 1 billion got repurchased. So uh, there was only $4 billion worth of commercial debt, C commercial, uh, when I say commercial, I mean debt owed by the central bank to banks and companies in terms of the rescheduled central bank promissory notes. So if it's gone up uh, from 4 to 10 since 1993, uh, it's been due to increased borrowing. And that borrowing can be, you know, obviously it could be the public sector, which we know has had a tendency during that time period to do some crazy things. Mm. Uh, it can also be just straight commercial credits, but I tend to think it's more government-incurred commercial debt. Uh, okay. Mismanagement, really, in the last uh, year since 1993. Next question. Thank you. Uh, the first uh, question is that you mentioned earlier that uh, President uh, Obasanjo had uh, offered the uh, IBB 1% yes. for the buyback. And that you also mentioned that uh, uh, Jeff Smith, who is your partner, who was your partner in this deal, is also a friend of uh, President Obasanjo. Now, could you tell me what the relationship is between, if you know, between Jeff Smith and our president? That is one thing. Secondly, you and Jeff, uh, what is the relationship between you and Jeff with the uh, IBB and what role did IBB play in all this buyback? It's then, a very good question. Also, you may also mention that Last you question. are being blackmailed by, by Fasha Imo and some other group. Now, have you filed any lawsuit or have you taken them to court in any way? That's one thing. The last one now, secrecy about this whole deal. You claim that your offer was the best offer. Well, my offer would be the best offer if I don't really open it up to the, uh, to the whole world and say, well, for competition. What makes you think that your offer is the best offer? What makes you think that others cannot even do better than what you offer the country? Yeah. Thank you. First of all, I never said we made the best offer. I said what the conditions were for the Central Bank of Nigeria to enter into an arrangement with us. Somebody, you know, they could have looked around. But you need somebody, first of all, who is proven capable of conducting this type of operation, which, which I did in Turkey. Uh, that's number one. Number two, you need somebody that you can trust. The governor of the central bank agreed or, or realized that these guys who he was dealing with were not trying to rip him off. They were trying to do a good job in accordance with the program and the game plan that we set down with the central bank and worked out at the beginning. We earned their trust. That's the key thing. Secondly, the relationship between Jeff and uh, President uh, Obasanjo, I think, was the first part of the question you asked. 
I don't know of any relationship there. I don't know that he has a relationship. I, don't, I just don't know whether he does. I don't think he does. But what was his relationship with IBB? Because this, uh, this is another thing in the fashion of report that's uh, preposterous. Uh, and I'll come to his converting to being a Muslim as well in this. Jeff, <coughs> Jeff met uh, General Babangida in a reception line when he was in Abuja. Uh, he went with the governor of the central bank to something, an official function, and met uh, General Babangida in a reception line. That's it. He never saw him again. He never saw him before that. And to my knowledge, he hasn't seen him since, although I am aware that he is currently in communication with people who are part of the IBP camp. So that's the answer to that question. Uh, have I filed suit against uh, Scientology in any countries as a result of this? Yes. I have filed suit against them in France, and I have given instructions in Germany to file suit against them for this very issue of this fashion new report, which has been published. The French government, by the way, raided the Church of Scientology's main office in Paris on May 16th. And they carted away two big computers and an entire closet full of what is called a black propaganda pack on me. And it was all about the fashion new report. Those were the only things carted away from the Church of Scientology's office in France. And on the basis of that and documents they gave to journalists in France, they've been sued as a result of this. How about fashion? Did you say they're not sued? Uh, <clears throat> when, when I went to London uh, two weeks ago, uh, I met with uh, attorneys in London, and the subject of the lawsuit against fashion is currently seriously under discussion. Uh, I believe there's a certain legal process in England that we go through. Uh, where you do a letter before action, we're, in, we're working on that. But first, we're going to do something even uh, uh, hopefully more solid, uh, is we're discussing whether it's possible to, based on the documentation that I have, whether we can have an independent third party, a major accounting firm, look at the documentation and give their own opinion about this debt buyback. <coughs> the central bank has already done their own independent investigations, but I would feel more comfortable uh, getting this independent third party, but I believe fashion will be sued. Okay, uh, I think the next set of, uh, oh, okay, that's a new, uh, Hubert, the man in the, well, I'm Dr. Warren, the next set. What, what I need to say is not really a question, but a kind of commentary. In this kind of report and what discussion we have so far, and what uh, Mr. Noah said about those two particular questions, which Fasha Noon and Clark were asking, and the fact that the two of them are not here to, is very significant, <coughs> and that Mr. Mix is very significant to. What is the nature of reality here? What is the nature of reality here? Is it a scam, a scheme, or is it about all the figures we will be looking at so far? And then, what is the nature of international capitalism? Which, which is going to bring us to people like uh, Mr. Minty? Essentially, there's the political, the financial, and the social psychological dimension, because this is a third world country and somebody coming from Europe and America, or who come from Europe and America. Financially or economically, I, I can't see much of, of queries here because if you want to keep on asking questions about Mr. Mitty, we're going back and forth on the figures. And from the suggestion which he has said, auditing by international or irreputable I can't, uh, said I cannot find will be meaningful. But let's go back to the politics of all this issue and go back to what reality is here. In, in, in the dealings, as Mr. Uh, Vincent and Jeffrey broken any American or British or European laws? Do, do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this, I'm, floating, I'm floating the questions. I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I don't broken any laws any, of, of their respective countries which really won't really, you know, point figures to if we can't, then what we really can do 
as individuals, either as patriotic Nigerians or, or internationalists who are really committed to democracy or human rights, is to say, okay, let's look at the work you have and use what we've been hearing here from him be able to be able to go forward or go for that in getting to the problem or the root of the problem, which I think to me is Nigerian. Questions that takes me to that. And uh, Mr. Okari has said something that has all, also always bugged a number of us looking at all the figures. That first, are these deaths by themselves true? And is there something in all of these figures that can let us know whether the deaths themselves were true? That's one question. And the other question is, it's one thing for the central bank to say they gave 1.1 billion to somebody to buy back 4 point something billion. The question is, is that what central bank reported that was used? The central bank could internally, and this may have nothing to do with you, internally have told Mr. B inside the central bank that here is $20 billion to buy back the debt. And then Mr. B gives you $1.1 billion to buy back the debt. And somebody in there has shared $19 billion within themselves. This is why I have always, I, I, I wonder, when you say Mr. Ahmed, and I don't know Mr. Ahmed is, is Rousseau, rest in peace. But, you know somebody, yeah, it's been dead. You know what your angle is. We as Nigerians don't know what the Nigerian angle is. And I think that if you are prepared to provide as much of the deal file as possible to an independent Nigerian body, who can then compare those deal files with what we are said within the Central Bank of Nigeria. Then we can compare whether what's left, what left, what money's left Nigeria and what got to you at the same amount. Well, let, let, me, let me answer this because this is really key. Uh, the purpose of, of uh, there's been a lot of talk, you know, we want to see the deal files, we want to see the deal files. The purpose of seeing the deal files is only to determine how much money Bob Minton Jeff Schmidt and Selwyn Lewis made in doing this business. You know, that's the only purpose of seeing the deal file. If, if the Central Bank of Nigeria can't, if they show you figures for this buyback operation that are different than mine, somebody is telling a lie. It's, was the price to Nigeria a fair price? It was transparent because you could track it every day. And Governor Ahmed, Mr. Shinoiki, Ani Mishawan, all of these people at the central bank had access to the daily Nigeria debt prices. If we were fiddling with the central bank of Nigeria and lying to them about how much money we were making, it was obvious to them any day they chose to call us on it. And what would have happened if we had done that? We would have been out of business with the central bank of Nigeria. This went on for five years. Day after day after day, 325 transactions for five years at fair prices to the Central Bank of Nigeria. These are the figures that I've given you that show what Nigeria spent and what Nigeria got for what they spent. If the Central, and one of the things in the Fashion and Report is they're talking about $6 billion to $12 billion money laundering scheme. Well, you can see there was only $1.5 billion that came out of Nigeria to do this operation. I'm netting out those sources and uses of funds that are you know, on both sides, the $1.2 billion and the other things we talked about. You net those out, the bottom line is money from Nigeria came out to the tune of $1.5 billion. $464 million worth of interest on debt we held and $1.1 billion worth of reserves. If the central bank says more than that came out, it didn't go through the structure we set up. The central, this is a very important point because again, this is in the fashion of the report. Was the structure that we set up used by the central bank of Nigeria in any way 
to launder money for General Babangida or anyone else? Mm -hmm. yes. No. The central bank had no access to those accounts. The test keys for those accounts, in order to operate, it's like an electronic signature, the test keys were held by yours truly. No one, even Jeff Schmidt, had the test keys to those accounts. If anybody stole money from the Central Bank of Nigeria, it's me, because I held those test keys. And if the Central Bank sent me $20 billion to send to General Babangida, and I only sent 18, the $2 billion is with me. But that didn't happen. Nothing came through those accounts other than what you see in these figures here. Because Jeff Schmidt and I were honest business people who were out to make a profit doing a service for a client, namely the government of Nigeria. In the first case, were the genuine debts? How did you ask the time uh, that there were genuine debts okay. owed by Nigeria? Okay. Three billion dollars of what we bought were the bank debt, the London Club debt. Now, as I tried to explain, many of you probably don't know how these loans originated, but these were syndicated loans, and by that I mean an agent bank was picked by Nigeria, a mandate was given to the agent bank, and it said, please go out and raise $400 million for the Federal Republic of Nigeria for, for general purposes. These were all general purpose loans. That, that's the way Nigeria borrowed back in the late 70s and early 80s. Some of these things were 10-year, 12-year-old loans. I mean, this wasn't, this wasn't, these things weren't created for this buyback. These things were already in place. And the agent banks, a city bank, they would go syndicate this among a group of banks, maybe 30 banks, maybe 50 banks, maybe 200 banks. And each bank would sign a big loan agreement. The Federal Republic of Nigeria would sign this same loan agreement. They'd have a big signing ceremony in London. The, the, the Federal Republic of Nigeria would get their $300 million, and the banks had their participations in this credit of a $1 million, $5 million, $50 million, whatever it was. Those, were, uh, those types of loans, these London Club debts, were indisputably valid debts. The, the, the government of Nigeria got the money for those. Those were indisputable. That's $3 billion out of $4.5 million indisputable. The, the Central, Bank of Promissor, uh, Central Bank of Nigeria promissory notes, the 1.1 billion, or 1 billion, 090 million. These, as I said, were from the trade credits that were done back in the, the late 70s, early 80s. These were rescheduled twice, in 84 and 88. It, started, the, the, it finished in 88, but it started in 87, the second reschedule. These debts, in order for the promissory notes to have been issued, there was much weeping and gnashing of teeth at the Central Bank of Nigeria that these, these things are not valid, these claims are bogus. You know, they had to go through invoice after invoice in 1984, in 82 and 83 and 84, to finally issue those promissory notes. There was a lot of disputes. There were people who got notes that probably shouldn't have gotten notes. There were people who should have gotten notes and didn't get notes. But that was not anything to do with me or anything else. That was something that happened long before I got involved in this. But the Central Bank of Nigeria in 1988, in 87, they redid that whole rescheduling of the, of the promissory notes. They did it again and issued new types of notes, RC notes, instead of the original RB notes. It was just a different category. They, some of the old RB notes were canceled. Some new RB notes were issued because they did find out that there were invalid uh, claims in those RB notes, original RB notes. They canceled them. They got in lawsuit after lawsuit about it, but that, that was canceled, and whether the central bank ever had to pay under those lawsuits, I don't know. It wasn't my business, and it wasn't in my interest to even ask about it. What I'm telling you is that those promissory notes that were issued in 1988 by the Central Bank of Nigeria, the RC series notes, were valid obligations of the Federal Republic of Nigeria through its central bank, resulting from trade credits from many years before. So there was never any question that a, that a note that was issued, an RC series note, there was never any question in my mind or the central bank's mind or in Chase Manhattan Bank's mind, who was the agent, that those were not valid debt instruments. The third type of debt, the 464 million, which was the government-to-government -government stuff, that was lodged 
in the Ministry of Finance. The Ministry of Finance had to verify in each and every transaction that yes, they did owe those notes. We had to check the signatures on each of the promissory notes that it was the Ministry of Finance who signed the bill of exchange or the debt instrument uh, indicating uh, the, the debt on behalf of the government of Nigeria. So, you know, all this stuff that these were not valid debts, you know, that's just, it's just not, it's not a, a, an issue because these things were all checked before, before 1988. I'm going to have Dr. Wampo, Mr. Hubbard Sharon, and Cass. What is your answer? Yeah. Okay. Dr. Yeah, I think I'll make a very brief statement and then ask my question uh, because uh, uh, I think we have to thank uh, the uh, Dr. Luke and his uh, group for what they are doing, getting us to, together. And uh, we have to thank uh, Mr. Linton, Linton, you know, for uh, you know coming here. But see, what we are seeing is uh, really what uh, that thing that uh, frustrates some of us that are Nigerians but are not allowed to operate as Nigerians because Nigeria doesn't have uh, 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 adequate institutions. We've talked about secrecy. We are, still, we are facing the same kind of problem now because uh, we have a civilian government, but when the constitution says the president shall you know, do this, the president's office interprets it as uh, you know, wake, uh, the president waking up uh, one morning and declaring uh, you know, what to do. Uh, and the same thing, the government, when the constitution says that the governor of the central bank, then the governor of the central bank, we talk of secrecy, we will interpret it as uh, the governor of the central bank uh, just you know, deciding. But when the constitution says the president shall, that assumes that there is supposed to be a, you know, a process. Most of it is not public. You know, so uh, uh, I think uh, 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 the question uh, really is that if our government was functioning properly, I think uh, Dr. Aluko, let them set up a commission, public commission, Dr. Aluko, I'm sure will be uh, willing to serve in it. I am, I will be willing to serve in it. Uh, 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 in that way, we will you know, be able to get into, without uh, you know, deciding, uh, uh, putting into account uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the person I will appoint, is he from uh, Southeast or Northeast or Yoruba or Igbo or Hausa, appoint people with integrity. Because if we do that, then the question becomes, uh, such questions as uh, where does, uh, uh, I, I, I'm hearing about the fashion you know, report, under whose auspices is this you know, set up? Uh, uh, and then you know, we are talking about uh, you know, secrecy. I think uh, 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 somebody that spoke to me before you know, said, uh, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I uh, uh, was uh, questioning the moderator. I believe, you see, this thing cannot be settled here. It's something that requires a commission detailed analysis and detailed you know, report. Okay, so I am, I, 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 I'm really, I think, actually, and if you look at here, you see, this is something that is central to the governance of Nigeria. I don't know how many Nigerians and the, the distribution of, uh, uh, you know, presence, you know, here, but that's our problem. So I am just standing up here to thank the people that have brought this uh, to our attention and to thank uh, Mr. Kino you know, for all of you. The fashion report, what is the genesis of you know, this report? Who appointed the uh, you know, fashion report? And uh, is it acting as a, a reporter? Right. Or, you know, what? The whole issue about this dead bad by the sea, you know, became um, a public issue as a result of the reporting that was done on it. What we're doing here, or what we, we aim to do here today, was to have taken it another step further. And I'm sure there's another step that can be taken again. Look, we have invited the key people who are you know, involved in this controversy. I'm very disappointed that Fashion and these people are not here. Because, look, if you are accusing someone of doing something wrong, and you've been saying it in, you know, in, 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 on radio, on television, everywhere, and yet you cannot come into the public to come and discuss this issue, quite frankly, look, there are a lot of people who are even surprised that Mr. Minting is here today. Because if you read 
in what I wrote. Then, in fact, if they told you that Mr. Meeting is coming here today and you, you, you saw him here, you'd be surprised. What is he doing here? So, you know. So, it, it, it's either some people have something to hide. And they are, they, they've given all sorts of, they've given reasons. Okay, lawyers said we shouldn't talk. But as Professor said, look, if you're in a public forum, you may decide not to answer any question. You may decide to limit your participation. And I think as much as fashion has gone crisscrossed the whole globe talking about this thing, and he has an opportunity, you know, to, to confront the person he's, he's challenging, and, you know, he's dumped, then there must be something wrong. You know, and, you know, just referring back to your, your, your statement, you see, we hope to take this issue one step further. One party is missing. You can make up your mind what it is. I'll just make a quick observation. I think George is a very eloquent articulating some of the points that I have. But I think it's important to note uh, that uh, during Nigeria's darkest hour, uh, the National Democratic Movement was one of the leading lights of democracy. And I think I think a word of commendation should go to Professor. <laughs> Comments. I think the message that has to go back to Fashion and it's that it's time for him to either put up or shut up. This is not a good use of people's time. Uh, and I think it's commendable that Mr. Minton, I, you know, I don't know, I'm sort of in a quandary as to whether to give him C for courage or D for effort. You know, I'm not a financial I'm not a financial guru, so I can't follow the money trail. But a couple of things. One, are you willing to testify on the oath? whether it be here in the United States or in Nigeria. That's one. Two, I noticed you mentioned uh, a couple of things. One, uh, well, you, you mentioned the fact that you filed lawsuits in, in uh, Germany, in Austria, in London, but conspicuously accent was Nigeria. And I wondered as to why uh, you didn't mention Nigeria. And one last question, and that is, uh, my memory, uh, my memory well, yeah, one, uh, the, <laughs> the, the third, the third one I was going to ask was, when this news, when this story broke, were you contacted by anybody from Nigeria? Would it be the principals at the central bank, or the late Governor Ahmed, or whoever else in Nigeria? Were you contacted by anyone when this news story broke? Well, <clears throat> I remember the first time that. Uh, you know, that I talked with uh, Mr. Noah on the phone. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it was, uh, it was not Mr. Noah, it was uh, Patrick Smith from Afri Africa Confidential in London. I said, you know, what's really surprising to me is that throughout this whole uh, brouhaha about this fashion report, nobody has ever talked to me or Jeff Schmidt about this debt buyback operation. That was the first man that I talked to. Later I talked with Mr. Noah, but this was after a lot of the information. So nothing was, nobody talked to me to get another side of the story before <clears throat> anything was written about the, the fashion and report. The report was lengthy, it had a lot of documentation, uh, and just because of its length, it looked like it had to be credible. No, but, sorry, but were the documents correct, but the interpretations were, were wrong? Malicious? Yeah. The, you know, all you, first of all, that what, yes, that's what I am saying. But the documents provided were correct. Well, I, I haven't seen the whole report. I've only seen the 17 or 20 pages that I've seen, but Jeff Schmidt has seen the whole report. He was shown it by a Scientology private investigator named Peter Franks in London who works with David Lee, who is also known as Rob Clark. And Jeff read it and said, you know, he said, all you have to do is... He said, first of all, these people don't understand how the market works for, for this debt. Secondly, all you have to do is peel away a couple of the layers of the onion, and there's nothing there. And I believe that the report has been fabricated. The, the, the essence of its direction has been fabricated as part of a, a plan by the Church of Scientology. And you may think, you know, this, you're calling it a church, you know, does this type of thing. Well, they have a history here in the United States. They, they, they did in the United States the most agrarious acts against the state, the United States, of any institution that's ever 
existed in this country. They broke into the IRS, they infiltrated the Justice Department, they put recording devices in the Justice Department and in the IRS. They, they made passes, and, in, and the top 11 people in the Church of Scientology were convicted in USA versus Mary Sue Hubbard, etc., in 1980, and went to jail for five years. Hubbard's wife, the founder of Scientology, Mary Sue Hubbard, took the rap for her husband. It was, so, this is an organization who has a criminal track record, and Stacy and Jesse, if you want to talk to them separately, they can tell you about the criminal activities that have gone on. I am, for them, their public enemy number one. They wish to destroy me. They wish to get me arrested. They have. They gave me chances. You know. They said, you know, we're going to release this fashion of material. They said this to Jeff. And if you don't agree to stop your activities against the Church of Scientology by Friday, we're going to put it all out in the public domain. I said to Jeff. I said, you tell them to do what the hell they want to do with that information because it's all lies anyway. Now, would I testify? And I, I have. I, and have I filed any lawsuits or thought about it in Nigeria? I have retained counsel in Nigeria. And I intend to go to Nigeria sometime in the very near future. Uh, I would be happy to testify to anybody in Nigeria who would like to hear anything about this uh, operation uh, that they would like to hear. The, the, I'd love to testify in front of the Senate who is supposedly going to hold hearings about this. Uh, you know, I have welcomed the opportunity to tell my story. I welcomed the opportunity when uh, Professor Aluko invited me and told me that uh, uh, Fashionu and his investigator were coming. I welcomed the opportunity to confront them in a public forum so that people could make up their mind who was telling the truth about this information inside this so-called Fashionu report. It's not a Fashionu report. It's a Scientology report being marketed by John Fashion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. All right, now, first of all, I want to thank you for coming. And of course, uh, Professor Luca and his group that organized this, uh, I must say thanks. Um, I can see an opportunity for, for you to do business because I was a service to be offered Nigeria at a, a deep discount, so to say. Um, but you also said that it was being handled secretly, which is also okay in order to make the transaction work. However, the point I make is if you finally executed the entire transaction, because down the road you couldn't finish the transaction before there was um, an agreement by the creditors to uh, do a buyback, you were buying it privately for Nigeria, which means if the creditors did not agree to a total buyback, you will have been able to finish buying the first $5 billion um, privately for your own portfolio. Uh, or Nigeria riding behind your back, so to say. Yes. But at the same time, it would appear to me then that Nigeria would, if you had finished doing that, Nigeria would be considered by the creditors as a bad debtor. Even though you did a good business for them, but they would have been default, they would have defaulted, so to say. Isn't that correct? Yeah. I, I, mean, I want you to see if you can clarify that point. I understand what you're saying, yeah. In other words, if you finish, Doing the first five billion dollars, which was uh, on the on the commercial side, yes, and Nigeria was riding behind you to do so uh, anonymously. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Um, Nigeria would still be considered by the creditors as a bad boy because they're not paid. No, no, uh, because at the time during the whole buyback period, this was a very important, and we didn't want to upset the banks. Yeah. We didn't want to upset the banks and the holders of these I agree with notes. you, they need to go secretly. Yeah. But the point I'm saying also is what Nigeria would have, what Nigeria, what would they have gotten because at the end of the day they would have been considered as bad debtors by, by, by their creditors. No. Even when you finish executing. Well, because at the time they were paying the interest. See, they were paying the interest while this whole operation went on. That, that, was, the, that was the reason to buy the debt because Instead of paying it to your creditors, why don't you pay it to yourself? And so it was still current then? Yeah, that current in yeah that they were current during this time period. The central bank was actually you know, keeping their money at the Bank for International Settlements, earning 6% per annum interest. You know, Here was a chance to get a return of 25% okay, per okay, annum, okay. taking your own risk. It was the best risk Nigeria could take, their own debt, if they were going to pay it. And I didn't know that, only Nigeria knew that. Okay, fine. Now... Other than the, in the commercial part of it, which was only $5 billion, right? Yes. 
what, what happened to the other side? Why couldn't you also continue to buy back? Because that's what really escalated the, the, the portfolio. You mean the, the, the government to government? Whatever I was here, the government to government. Yeah. What, what, what was the problem there? Why did you not take part in the right? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, well, uh, we, we would have loved to have done more. I mean, you know, from our perspective, we wanted to, but this government to government debt is very tricky because you, you have Nigeria comes the way this rescheduling and Paris Club things work. The country, with all of its, um, you know, finance ministers and central bank people, they come and they sit down with a Paris Club group of creditors in Paris, basically the OECD countries, and they negotiate deal by deal in terms of rescheduling. And you, you have to sort of go to the individual debtors to do it. And it was not something that uh, Nigeria thought we should even think about doing in large quantities. Yeah, because what you were really doing was a small part of the global position, isn't it? A large part of the commercial credit, but a small part of the oh, total the Nigerian yeah, yeah. debt. Because the key thing on that government-to-government -government debt, you know, the, the arrangements made between Nigeria and its, its government creditors are intimate, you know, government-to-government -government official <laughs> arrangements that uh, some of the diplomats here could better comment than I could because I've never been involved in that type of... Because the point I'm making is, if indeed those were available to be discounted, yeah. they would have still been discounted along with, with uh, the commercial angle of the debts. That's right. And which means that we wouldn't have been as bad as we are now uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the size of the portfolio, of the debt portfolio. Right. You're absolutely right. There, there should have been more attention put on that. Once we discovered that those types of credits were available, we only started buying those types of credits at, uh, after uh, the middle of 1992, okay. up through February of 93. I have only a few more questions. So, um, did you say you wanted some people from your group to say anything? Or what? No? Well, no, no, I don't think so now. Just, I think you've got enough questions on okay. these issues. Um, yeah, we, we are going to have uh, just a few more questions. So, the lady in the back, I've seen her hand up, Dr. Dimoli, Dr. Then Mr. Mosu. Oh, I thought, I thought I asked you to speak before. Right, well, I didn't get a chance. I'll, I'll get a chance. chance. I see. Ma'am, could you ask me? Yeah. You are allowed to yeah, please. talk? Yeah. And then yourself, please. I've got a question before. Right. Please stand up. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, I have a few questions to this meeting. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll make it a question with a couple of short parts. First of all, I guess my question is, it's very simplistic in that I don't know in depth what a, what the scheme involved, but um, from looking at it in a simplistic angle, it seems my question is: is that is it legal for a debtor to buy back his own debt? Is there an official avenue to do that? If there if there is, how come Nigeria did not? Um, how come the CDM people did not go through the official channels? And if there isn't. If it's, if it's not illegal to, to do that, um, what role you were an intermediary for it seems? When you you were a consultant on the part of Nigeria and you said you were paid your fee for doing the transaction was forty five million dollars. Now when you bought back the, the debt, you bought back our promotion notes and things like that. Where these did you resell them to Nigeria? Or you outrightly cancel them? I think that's the underlying question. We canceled them. We, we, we canceled the debts. That's, that's what happened. All of the debts got canceled. That was the effective bottom line for Nigeria. Okay, and is, it, how, is, is that official avenue? You mentioned that you know, Nigeria has been purchased. You, you affected $3, $3 billion. Of bank debt, $4.5 billion in debt total. And then some other billions were done through official channels. No, it was all unofficial. Uh, it was all unofficial, and at first the question is whether it was legal. Uh, there were no, uh, White and Case, a law firm in New York, was consulted by the Central Bank of Nigeria at the beginning as to whether this was uh, legal. Just to be safe, I mean, we all thought it was legal. There was no, uh, there was no loan agreement that the Nigerian uh, government had that prohibited it because no loan agreement ever foresaw the possibility. It was not a, it was, 
it was not something that anybody thought about. So, are you saying it's not, it was not illegal? Right. Is, was it legal or it was not illegal? It was not illegal. So it's not legal. <laughs> it's not legal. <laughs> it's not illegal. It's not It's not illegal. It's not illegal. It's Okay, now here's, here's, if you were to ask me, did they, did they in any way, did they in any way violate, did they in any way violate the spirit of their loan agreements? I would have to say the answer is probably yes. But, you know, Nigeria made a decision uh, which was, and again, a gentleman asked a question about uh, General Babangida and his role in this. Governor Ahmed had to get the approval from General Babangida to do this business. I mean, this was not something the central bank on their own could undertake. This was this had to go to the highest level in Nigeria at the time, which was General Babangida. So he did give his approval to do this, and once that uh, approval was given. Then we, in March 1988, we signed these contracts with the Central Bank and proceeded. To, after they had consulted with White and Case, their lawyers in New York, uh, which is one of the biggest law firms in the world, to get to a green light that this was not uh, going to cause them any problems. Okay, the lady. Yeah, you said that Nigeria paid 34, an average of 34 cents on a dollar for the debt. Right. What did you purchase it for? Uh, on average, about 33 cents on the dollar. So, so, you, so besides the $45 million, you also made... No, no, no. One percent, we made a, a, a net profit of about one percent of the total debt purchase, which was $45 million. So that's what you made over the course of five years? Yeah. So was that a profit or a service fee? Right. Yeah, it's a service fee, but, you know, we're... we're Excuse we're me, was paid. that the only client that you worked on during those five years? Did your business, did your company work with somebody else, or were you working exclusively with Nigeria? Exclusively for Nigeria during the, at least four of those five years. So it's an average of $9 million a year. One more quick question. Okay, this um, Predilink, this, this D, that Predilink, were you or any of your partners, any of your family, any affiliates, involved with that company, were any of y'all on that board? Or was that an independent company of, you know, Jack and Joe over here? Or did you know these people? Uh, there was no affiliation with anybody other than NNPC for that company. NNPC owned 100% of the shares of Trolion General Corporation and Predelect Investments Limited. They held the shares physically in their possession. Nobody that... Uh, my partners, no, none of us had any interest in the product. Well, Nigeria seems to be still in debt, and $45 million <laughs> seems to be a lot of money for five years' worth of work. Can I get a well, job? Yeah, well, but here's the important thing to remember. The commercial debt stock during that five-year period of time was reduced from... Uh, the five billion of commercial bank debt was reduced to two billion, and the three billion dollars worth of promissory notes—no, not three billion dollars. Two billion dollars worth of promissory notes were reduced to one. So the commercial debt stock went down substantially. The fact—the fact that since 1993 it's gone up again has nothing to do with me because I wasn't involved then. Right, I understand that, but I just think that the fee seems to be a little high for a country that doesn't seem to be able to afford. chose the business that we were involved in. We got paid a, a price that was extremely reasonable. We had people who were offering to do this. In fact, we set up a meeting with Solomon Brothers and the Central Bank of Nigeria in 1998 in Washington, D.C. here at the IMF meeting. No, not 1998, uh, 1990. Uh, with Solomon Brothers. And Solomon Brothers offered to do it for 2%. We just sat there and we were in the room when the meeting took place with the Central Bank. We were very happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, who else? Is our yeah. Sorry, Dr. Ben Gori, then Dr. Momo. Yeah, uh, you are doing business. That's fine. 
And this business of buying back, the political economy is not right. It's not good for the country. Really. It's good for the business, but for the country, it's not. The political economy is not. It's not. I know Governor Ahmed very well. This time. In the, in the, in the, in the no, I'm not I just know him because I have people walking around him who are friends. He was a good Muslim, but he was a cook. <laughs>
Well, <laughs> I think uh, you know, I think there, there are many more experts here than I in economics. But if you look at uh, if you any time there's a transition to democracy, look, look at Eastern Europe. Because I just came back from Eastern Europe, we I received a, an award for human rights. And, you know, I've got videotapes. If anybody wants to see this award ceremony, you can have them for free. They're right over there. And I talked about Eastern Europe struggling with uh, democracy. Nigeria is going through a painful process, which will only continue to get painful, more painful. It is the nature of transition that this has to happen. And I don't have the answer. I didn't uh, have anything to do with Nigerian banks, but I believe that uh, other than the central bank in Nigeria, you should. Excuse me? Sorry, if that's an impact, you are not dealing with only one bank. There are many multiple I mean, central banks. Central bank is one bank. You are sending every other bank. But you see, the one thing we want Nigerian banks are dealing in the domestic market. These were domestic market problems. This was not uh, this was not caused by any sort of international implication. This was domestic monetary policy that, that screwed up the banking system. Did you have any Nigerian agent in your company around that time? Any Nigerian actor working for you or no. You? no? You had access directly to Nigeria. Who made the contact? Jeff, Jeff Schmidt. Who worked for the Central Bank of Nigeria for five years. But you work directly as an employee? No, no, as an advisor to the central bank as part of this Shearson Lehman, Lazards, and SG Warburg. Okay. After you, then this uh, I also want to uh, thank you for showing up to uh, discuss this issue. But I also want to uh, be careful to not uh, reach rapid conclusions about those who did not show up. Uh, if you look carefully at the fact that uh, petrol royalties, well, the petroleum should be used to settle for children as a barrier during the Wangida years, or a little bit earlier, and that the Naira was dollar fifty-two, uh, one Naira, dollar fifty-two. Today, one dollar is one hundred Naira. That a lot of things have happened during those years to make the Nigerian populace ready for any and every report by Fasha Anu, Scientology, Sadiboye, anybody, because a lot of money has been looted. Stolen, yes. In, a, in your effort to exonerate yourself, which is not a good, it will seem like if you have more forthcoming with some of the practices that you saw in Nigeria, by Nigerians, and other people playing in Nigeria, in Nigeria that have helped us to build untold debt, unpaid, and you have visited Nigeria, you have seen that perhaps there isn't anything you can see at sites that one day's petroleum royalty has done for Nigeria. Then you will see why a number of people are going to be a little hesitant about writing off a report you know, and say maybe there's no truth to it or anything like that. So, when you are forthright with us, if you know anything that was going on in government or in the facility of government in the financial markets and whatever, that are not done that way by anybody or users, then you come up with that, it will further help your effort mm -hmm. to exonerate yourself. Because in many of these situations in the final analysis, even in the court of law, it's he says, she says. First of all, you know, I have done something that no one else has been willing to do. The Central Bank, John Fashionu, or anyone else. I have given you some hard facts and figures that can be checked. The Central Bank should have those same hard facts and figures. The, the, the Senate in Nigeria, if they wish to hold hearings on this matter, the central bank will now be compelled to match these figures. They cannot hide anymore if the Senate wants to talk to the central bank. So that is Have you been to Nigeria? Okay, that's the, the that's the second question. I've never been to Nigeria. Huh? Whoa! <laughs> 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 
I have never uh, stepped foot in Nigeria. Jeff Schmidt, uh, let me just, uh, just so you understand. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I'm, and I'm happy that you are going to go. Yeah. Soon. When you come back, ask your own conscience. You won't be able to talk to me or to this group. You, what you can, those are some of these faces. Ask yourself, uh, why won't everybody pay attention to Fasha Moon's report? Yes. When you see a Nigeria with 120 million people working hard every day. And you make it for five million. I'm making, you make it for five million in five years. And that is more than the budget of some of the 10 million people's states. Well, let me tell you, let me so tell you something. I have been to India, I have been to Brazil, I have been to Ecuador. I have seen the kind of poverty that you're talking about in Nigeria. I know. I'm not hard working to Yes. Yeah. Listen, the Brazilians are hard working, the Ecuadorians are hard working, everybody is hard working. But, you know, I don't have to come here and apologize for what I did in Nigeria. Oh, I, yeah. You know, I did something that was extremely beneficial for. Nigeria. If, if that was not translated or transferred to the population in Nigeria because somebody stole all the excess uh, uh, savings that Nigeria did, that has nothing to do with me. Do I have any responsibility? You can talk about the millions of dollars of, the, of debt that you have to reduce, but the people who, don't, who are not party to that are looking to any player, to any player to, to help them. You may not be able to help, but if you can, please help. Jeff Schmidt, for example, uh, you know, he, he has a, a scholarship fund, which he set up to help people in Nigeria go to college here in the United States. Um, it's not a big deal. Uh, I, I've made contributions to it. Uh, it, it's not a, you know, a, I mean, it's not a big deal. You know, <laughs> 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 that's, 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 you must understand, you know, my purpose in coming here, uh, you know, I don't have any business in Nigeria. I have no concern about any criminal acts. You know, the Nigerian government is not going to charge me with criminal acts. The United States government is not going to charge me with any criminal acts. Nobody's going to. The purpose of this is to make sure that you are aware of what is behind this debt buyback operation and what is behind the fashion news report. You know, that's all I can do. You can then decide what you want to do with that information. Miss I am at the top. I like to observe that you're a very interesting personality, and I wish that I was still very uh, involved, you know, right now in journalism because then I would like to sit down with you and talk and, and really talk. Uh, I like the aspect about uh, your involvement, your prob your battles with Ch the Church of uh, Scientology, and I think that maybe that is an area to probe a little bit more. Yes. Uh, I like the observation you made about you got an award on human rights in, in, in Western Europe, and I like I wanted to ask you where were you when we were having our own battles, being that you 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 you, you sat here, uh, you and your Jeff and another guy, and you made forty five uh, million over this transaction over these five years, which is legitimate. Because you did you render service, and uh, if you know. We don't have to hold you responsible for the quality of leadership we have, but I think that what makes one very helpless in the situation and what comes out very clearly here is the quality of people we have working for us on our own end. And we've been had, and we've been had. And we, the action is now for us to now make sure that we have people who are not just had like that. And that is what is frustrating for, for me. I don't understand finance, by the way, he does, you know, which is good. And, uh, but I'm just making a, a woman comment. Yes. And finally, I was going to ask you, do you have a sense of obligation to this country for where you took so much? You have said that Jeff you know, has a scholarship, a little dropping for the you know, people back yes. there. But I am not asking you, are you going to give? But I ask you that deep down, having met so much, and, and you are finished with it now, do you sometimes feel a sense of obligation or even a sense of regret? Would you do it again? Would you 
do it again. <laughs> no. So let, let me answer the question here. Uh, would I do it again? No. And the reason I wouldn't do it again is because I'm involved in a whole different level of my life now uh, with m m other issues that uh, don't have to do with making money. Now, during the last uh, four years, I've spent almost $5 million of my own money fighting a totalitarian organization who, who has a written policy that 2.5% of the population of the world should be liquidated quietly and without sorrow. The, the award that I got was not in Eastern Europe. Leipzig is now part of Germany. Uh, it is not Eastern Europe anymore. Uh, the people in Germany and France have lived under Nazi rule. The Nazis were a totalitarian organization. Scientology is an aspiring totalitarian organization who, just like in Hitler's Mein Kampf, advocates the, dis the, the elimination of human beings from the face of this planet because they don't agree with their way of thinking. Germany and France have taken this rise of totalitarianism within this organization extremely seriously and treat it like a pariah because they have an obligation under their constitution in Germany to keep this type of totalitarian movement from ever rising again in a purely democratic system. Hitler came to power in a purely democratic system. The United States sees it very differently. They believe that Scientology is being persecuted because of their religious beliefs. This is the battle that I'm involved in now. Uh, do I have a sense of obligation? Yes, I am trying to do something to make this world a better place, to make it safer for all of us. And, you know, the way, and I don't have uh, absolute proof of this, but the way the Church of Scientology's investigators went to Nigeria for the first time and met with the new vice president of Nigeria was because the Secretary General of OPEC in Vienna, Rowanu Luckman, who is a Scientologist, set up that meeting. And if you think that with all the rich people that exist in Nigeria, you know, Nigerians are not, they don't flash their money around. I don't flash my money around either. But if you don't think that the Church of Scientology has some influence already in Nigeria, I think in the coming months you'll find out that they actually do. These type of people pray on human beings. They try to create a system that destroys a human being from within. And that's the fight that I'm involved in now. I'm, I'm here to defend myself on this Nigerian issue so that, so that my fight against the Church of Scientology's totalitarian aims is not derailed because the Church of Scientology succeeds in pulling the wool over a lot of people's eyes. Time will tell whether I'm telling you the truth or whether John Fashionu and his investigators, who are in reality the Church of Scientology, have lied to you. I believe you will find at the end of the day that they have lied to you, that they have tried to use an entire nation to put one person who is an enemy of theirs, the biggest enemy in the world, because I am financing a lawsuit against them where they killed a young woman in Clearwater, Florida, and her family stands to get more than $100 million in damages from these people. The family has pledged that the majority of that money will go into an organization that fights totalitarian groups, cults throughout the world. Like in Uganda, you saw recently, a couple of months ago in February or March, a thousand people committed suicide or, or were slaughtered uh, by this cult. This, this happens in Africa, it happens in the United States, it happens all over the world that these type of groups exist. And that's my fight now. I also want to commend Kolaji uh, Luku and the NDM, and of course uh, Noah, uh, for this um, uh, forum, and Mr. Milton for coming. Uh, people will say, uh, anyone who hears one side of the story and make a judgment is the most, most wicked of persons. I don't think that there's any wicked person among us here today, but the d dilemma is that uh, we've seen the report, and uh, now we've had uh, Mr. Minton. Still, I don't think we can make a judgment. 
I think it was Dr. Wako who suggested you know, a high-level power commission. Now, we know what that means in Nigeria. Um, but the, the problem is this, and I hope that Mr. Minton understands us. Uh, the WASP is denying, I didn't do it. The B is denying, I didn't do it. Yet, the farmer's eyes are swollen with venom. Mm -hmm. That is the case with us in Nigeria. Uh, obviously, uh, you did a legitimate business, but I don't see anyone who has ever come to Nigeria from outside who didn't do a legitimate business. Yet, there is something that is out there now that you can see if you go back to Nigeria. Uh, the, the, the level of poverty, the level of exploitation, and everything else. Now, so if people come up with investigation and produce a report, and people jump at it and try to understand it, you can understand why. Now, we've been going through this for a number of years, of course, starting from our own enslavement and colonialism, it all comes from outside. The fact that this is done in secrecy doesn't even lend any credibility to it as far as I'm concerned because that's what has been happening to us. We need to put a stop to it. Now, you are not a scapegoat, but I want you to understand that we have a legitimate problem. If you did a legitimate business and people raise a hell of a noise because of what we have gone through, over the years, you must have to understand us. Uh, people have asked, do you have a sense of obligation? Do you think that is something else? I mean, you have that human right award, fine. This uh, lady here, very distinguished lady, went through hell in Nigeria, as you probably must have heard from the citation. There are many people like that who had the same problem because of the kinds of government that we had, one of which you dealt with. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria, you are saying that, well, they have their own figure. These figures mean nothing, absolutely nothing, as far as their own accounting procedure is concerned. We, we know what goes on. We know when 10%, 20% is gone out, I mean, goes out, that there is no record for that. And so when they give us documents and you authenticate the documents that they give us or you try to authenticate it, it means nothing to us. And I just hope that you and your group would also appreciate the fact that people are suffering because of shady deals that have gone on in Nigeria. I'm not suggesting that yours is one of them, but there has not been any business person company, industrialist, contract, and so contractor, and so on, that has come to Nigeria that will claim that it has not done a legitimate business in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, basically, we are going to, I mean, if Scientology is going to help Nigeria, you know, get to the good of this matter, we go for them. Now, if you think we should, we should back up Scientology, you should be willing to help us trace this group. You just said that you know that I've been, you know, committed some money. Are you willing to give us some of the facts that might be, uh, maybe you have about some of, some of these news. To what extent are you willing to, you know, uh, to, to, to back Nigeria up so that Nigeria will have to deal with Scientology? We need some of this money. We know this money <laughs> are hiding somewhere. If you have information about where they have, you know, like you said that, you have to tell money, please tell us. You know, that's just a comment. Then, secondly, do you think that if you are working for the United States of America, I mean, do you think this is the kind of thing that you will do if you were Nigeria? I mean, do you think your country will be willing to enter into this kind of thing? Uh, Just one more, so that. And then you were talking about uh, <laughs> IBB's camp, you know. Uh, IBB's camp, yeah. Yeah, I, I really want you to. That, that tells me that you know more than you are giving out. I mean, I, want to, I, I really want you to tell us what do you mean by IBB's camp? You know, well, you, you, you really need to come clean. He who comes, I mean, he who seeks equity must come with clean hands. We really have to come clean so that we know that. I mean, we want to determine who is the enemy. Is it you or psychology? Yeah. You know, and you have a duty to, 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 to clear your conscience that you're not getting here. So, I mean, tell us more information. That you, this is okay. okay, Jeff Schmidt said to me on the phone uh, for the two weeks that I was in Europe, I spoke to him, he lives in Brunei right now. He said, uh, <laughs> he said, you know, uh, IBB's camp has been trying to get in touch with you the last two weeks. That's in touch with you. Trying to get, trying to get in touch with me. 
but he said the situation seems to be completely diffused, so I don't think they're going to get in touch with you. So uh, whatever IBB's camp means is what Jeff said, IBB's camp. He didn't say who, he didn't give me a name, you know. I don't know IBB, I never met the guy, I never went to Nigeria. Jeff met him in a reception room. He approved this buyback deal. We don't know anything about IBB, we don't know where any money is. You know, I said to you that I think that it's fair to assume that IBB looted money from Nigeria too. I've been told by people in Nigeria, yeah, he did a good job, he looted money, but that's the way it was in Nigeria. Abacha, on the other hand, looted. He stepped on everybody in the process. He killed people. He put them in jail. So now everybody wants to make him his family petty. Fine. If that's the way the thing was done in Nigeria, you know, I had nothing to do with that. Babangida stole a, an amount of money probably that was within acceptable standards. You know, that's the system. <laughs> This is reality here. I mean, you know, and for anybody, and for John Fashion, who to try to blame this, this whole uh, history of uh, looting in Nigeria on two white guys, one of which has never even been to Nigeria, for God's sakes, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Yeah. You know, that's just the way I feel about it. No, 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 wait, listen, when I say the debts are written off, you know, I mean, where does Nigeria, this is a very important point here, where does Nigeria think, I know it's think, long, but uh, we will soon be over here. Yeah, let's go. Where does Nigeria think it can get away with saying to its commercial creditors, we're not paying? You can't do it. They would seize your oil on the high seas. You would be, you would be put in debtor's prison, basically, by international creditors, commercial creditors. I'm not talking... This is the stuff. You can't ignore your debts. Where on earth, in any place on the world, do people get to borrow money and say, no, I'm not paying you back? It doesn't happen. You know, you can ask your government to government creditors, you can say to the United States, give me a break. That's what's happening. You know, it's happening with France, it's happening with Germany. But your commercial creditors, you know, they won't trade with you anymore. You know, that's the reality of life in a, in a world. Say some of these debts are being written up already. I mean, before you. Yeah, so, so if they've written them off down to, uh, uh, to zero, why would they, you know, they're going to get whatever they can get from it. If they sell it back to us at 35 cents on the dollar, fine. If they wait and get paid 100 cents on the dollar by Nigeria, it's all profit to them at that stage because they've already written it off. Okay, we're going to have just two more questions and we cut, okay? Uh, first, there's still some more books that can be sold. There's still some more food outside that can be eaten. And uh, I think you still have some videos you want to give up. Oh yeah, anybody wants a video. So, your, your question, no, you've asked me hey. one question before. You, you made 45 million, and you, you know, you won out for human rights and stuff. Um, is your, are you at peace with your conscience? I mean, you know, you were acting in the best interest of Nigerian government, or you were acting in the best interest of your country? I am completely at peace with my own conscience over this uh, five-year uh, business that I did on behalf of the Nigerian government. I'm happy that I made so much money. Remember, it's, there were three people involved in this, but, and we had employees too, but there were three partners. I didn't make $45 million. The three of us together made $45 million. And I am happy with my conscience, and I did the best job I could on behalf of the Nigerian government, and I don't think there was anybody in the world who could have done it better for them. You're, you're smiling, you're laughing, but I don't think it's funny. <laughs> okay, okay, next door. Uh, I will implore you. You just said that you don't, I mean, you're not really interested in it. I'm imploring you to use your political and uh, financial power that is internationally recognized to help in recovering some of the debts, I mean, some of the money that they may uh, I mean, there are many ways you can do that. You can use your influence. Uh, in the various uh, banks internationally to make sure that the accounts of these people are declared so that people, I mean, people will know what actually happened and where the problem will start from there. Thank you. As I said, you know, I'm willing to uh, testify in front of the uh, uh, Nigerian senator or whoever and give as much information as I have. You know, Jeff Schmidt, uh, who is still involved 
actively in Nigeria on a business level. Uh, you know, he has testified in London, uh, you know, in connection with some of this uh, Abacho stuff, uh, and has been helpful, I believe, to help locate some of some of the money. Uh, I haven't had, I don't have the knowledge in the last seven years of, any, of doing anything in business in Nigeria, so I'm, I'm not at, at the same level of current knowledge, but, you know, you also must understand that in the past, the only Nigerian people that I really ever knew were bureaucrats who worked for the regime of General Baba Gita. Uh, you know, uh, Professor Aluko and uh, Mr. Noah, who you know I've come to know just through this. You know, they had, they were. Uh, Mr. Noah was extremely impressed that I too was, in a different way, a freedom fighter. You know. If you think that uh, what I do with regards to the Church of Scientology is easy, you should listen sometime to watch this video and see the, the kind of problems that I've had uh, in the past with these people. You know, I am a freedom fighter, and anything that I can do to help, and by coming here, I am trying to do something to help put an end to this issue so that everybody knows what, what's happened in Nigeria. You mentioned... Um the reports and um, the green report should have been made public by yourself and that there was an agreement not to make it public. I mean, has it expired? Was there a time lapse on it? And you said you're going to Nigeria as well. How does that tie in? If you say, I mean, can the Nigerian government basically prosecute you for making the contents of the report bring it into the public domain? Well, as I said, because of the new democratic government in Nigeria and its desire to be transparent, I don't believe that uh, the Nigerian government would dare at this change sue me because I was willing to let information be known to the public. We thank Mr. Uh, Minton for coming. For uh, Mr. Noah, who, who traveled all the way from London well, yesterday, the garden yesterday, uh, for coming. Someday, Mr. Pasha, who wants to come and speak, we'll give him a forum again. Thank you. Thank you.